Hi everyone, welcome to this Magnus Billing video tutorial. We will be discussing how to create and configure trunks, both for incoming and outgoing calls. The first step is to create the provider which the trunk will belong to. For example, we will make a new provider with the name VoIP. In the name field, we will put VoIP. In the credit field, we can put any value we want. This is for reference for the starting value. This is not a mandatory field. We can add a description if we would like, and then we'll click Save. Every time a customer makes a call, the credit will be discounted based on the tariff. To add more credit, you can go to the Provider Credit option and then add a new credit. If you go into the Provider Credit menu and then click New, you can now select the provider from the drop-down list, select the credit amount, and optionally a description, and then click Save. This will add credit to the provider. You can now see that the provider has $100 in credit added. Let's add a trunk using the Routes Trunk menu. We will click New to create a new trunk. We will select a new provider that we just created, VoIP. We will give this trunk a name such as VoIP Premium. Next, we will add a username and a password. You will put the provider's IP address in the host field. Note that if you're using IP authentication, you will not need to enter the username and password fields. Calls will be sent to this trunk in the international format. If the calls need to be sent to providers in another format, you can use the Add and Remove Prefix fields to do this. For example, if this was a trunk for Argentina, we could set it to remove the country code 54 and add a zero. You can see here we've done that by clicking the remove prefix and adding 54 and then clicking in the add prefix and clicking zero. You can now select the codex to be used. Note that G729 is not included by default in Magnus Billing since it is a paid codec. We can now set the trunk type. In this case, it will be SIP. There are multiple other options you can use, some which require a hardware card, such as dongle and extra. Here we can set a backup trunk. If a call fails or gets a returned error such as 503, the call will attempt the backup trunk. At the bottom, there's an option to send the call to the backup trunk if it fails despite the error. This is handy because some providers do not send back a 503 
or recognized error when there's no money in the provider trunk. In the event that there's no credit and you still want to dial the provider backup trunk, regardless of the error, you can use this option. Note that you should be careful with this option. If you enable this, then every call that gets returned as a busy will end up going to the backup trunk. The state can be set to active or inactive. In this case, we would want it active. Register trunk can be set to yes or no. Register trunk is necessary only if the provider asks for this or if it's an incoming trunk. Note that we also have an additional tab. Here you can modify additional options if needed. For example, if this is an incoming trunk and you enter ES into the language field, the incoming audio message would be in Spanish. Most of these options usually do not need to be modified. You can also set other options such as the maximum number of channels. Note that overflow calls will be going into the backup trunk. Most of these other options generally do not need to be modified. NAT type can be modified here. You can set yes or no. This usually does not need to be modified. Direct media the same. It's set to default by no, and you only need to change this if your provider asks you to. The type is set to peer. This is for outgoing calls. If it's an incoming call, you would change it to friend. The additional parameters option is for advanced users and is generally not needed. We will now save our changes. We're now ready to verify that everything's working. To verify that the trunk is registered, you can log into the server with SSH and open the asterisk CLI and type SIP show registry. This will show us the trunk status. Some trunks require special configurations, but this is a general guideline for most providers. A common issue to remember is that IP authenticated providers must have your IP. We often see providers that use IP registration and they do not have the server IP of the client. Make sure to provide your server IP to your provider. Always make sure that you fill in all the needed fields. That concludes this video. Remember to subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching. This video has been sponsored by Synapse Global, www.synapseglobal.com.